Alright, welcome back everybody. If you recall, in the last video, uh, this treasure chest here made a complete and utter fool of me. However, I did uh, emerge victorious in the end, so now we shall examine its contents. Okay. First off, we got another tape here to give a listen to. And a book. No book. Just a scroll. This right here is of the utmost importance. This is what's going to keep us alive. All right, when we actually go inside the uh, the pyramid. So we got to take that for sure, for sure. I believe that's it. So let's give this tape a listen. And then we'll get this party started for real. Translation tape. Rewind. And play. Let's turn this down a little bit. And play. I've been up for hours trying to analyze this scroll, and you won't believe what I found. Friend, I wish you were here. This is amazing. There's two distinct sections on the scroll. Uh, right in the middle is a, is a red sphinx. Uh, well, I'm saying it's the Sphinx, it's a lion. But, uh, you know the controversy uh, surrounding that. Uh, above it is the winged uh, scab. Uh, below the Sphinx, uh, oddly enough, below the paws, <laughs> is a cartouche of uh, a Cheops. And directly below that is Horus the Red, uh, the, the Egyptian's uh, uh, symbol for Mars. Let me, let me, let me return, uh, translate this a little bit better. Heaven and sky, eternity, uh, ka, uh, beauty. So what we're talking about is a heavenly, uh, peaceful God. Uh, return, uh, well, no, no, go, go, go forth strongly. Uh, go forth strongly. So it's a very positive message. Yet on the other side now they have, uh, a very dire, catastrophic message open hurry mistake life uh, uh, the mistake of a lifetime I will leave with one interesting note though on the very bottom of the scroll there is a symbol that matches underneath the Sphinx and uh, it, it it is a unique symbol but it is not Egyptian it's not Egyptian can you imagine that it, I know I know it, it, uh, it, it if you're looking at this right now it looks Atlantean I know uh, I can't. I can't imagine it is, but uh, it looks Atlantean. And uh, lastly, there is the condition of my health, friend. During these last few days, the translation of the scroll has taken its toll on me, and obviously, you know of the curse. I probably won't be here by the time you arrive. So, good luck, friend. I wish you well. This is my favorite Egyptian god. The gator god. I'll admit I don't know his name. You got a secret track on here? It's all through I the knew charade. it. Friend, I am glad you decided to stick around. I was worried about the others, but obviously you saw through the charade. Let us start, shall we? The first line, Perek, Sebekik, Ankuja, Senem, Ejet, Nekek, Wenek, Shedet, Nejer. Literally, may you go forth, may you embrace life, prosperity, and health forever and ever. May you open the well of God. Obvious reference to Osiris there. Let's continue, shall we? Wentifi, Mejiti, and ready enough, Haref, Er, Chadimus, Rarer, Chadimuth. Literally, he who shall open this book without giving his face to its seal, Ra will destroy him. And uh, uh, that's not to be taken lightly. Uh, as you well know, friend, the, the uh, gives one's face to. The translation is a common idiom for to pay attention to, to heed. Well, 
I hope you've gleaned something from the true translation. Obviously, a translation and a piece of Egyptian document that will change history. Friend, before I carry on, I have one more warning for you. The markings, the markings on the right hand side of the scroll. Six tablatures are a dire warning to those reading the scroll. The ascribed curse is pointing to that side, to those six tablatures. Some have a trio of scarabs, others do not. Pay close attention to their markings though. I fear if you run into those, your adventure will soon be over. Good luck, old friend, and please be careful. The curse and the danger awaits, and it is real. The journey is now in your hands, and you will be responsible for solving this enigmatic riddle of the Sphinx. So the <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so these things will kill us. The next thing that we have to do is something that I kind of dropped the ball on in the uh, in the last episode, and that is that. Do you remember this? We have to add the last four digits of his campus identification to the date that the scaffold was completed to get. to Gatton Brink's door. In this case, the code is 0217 plus 1334, which gives us 1551. Success. Just like that, we're into the pyramid proper. Go in here, and it's very difficult to see. I do apologize for the low resolution, but that is just kind of the way it was back then. dark in this area. I think it gets lighter. Did not mean to steal that from you, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm gonna take it, though. Well, imagine how dark it would be if this magical fire wasn't still uh, lit after several thousand years. not go in there just yet. Let's just see what's in the rest of this hallway. Got more, more pharaohs. myself wanting this object. It's shiny. Can't touch that. And that's just a wall. So, that's fine. Let's go in the little first little room first. Hey, 
Hey, it's the Gator God. That's my favorite one. Uh, what's his name? Hold on. I'm gonna look up his name. His name is Sobek. This game actually had a great soundtrack. We got a boat, which is somewhat unexpected. Got our alligator friend again. solve it. I think there's literally just like a room of alligator statues and they have colorful eyes and you have to match them up. Pretty basic. One of the easier puzzles in this game. Can I go up? Yes. Sunbolt. That's cool. Hello. Didn't mean to look up your skirt there. down, shall we? Oh. Well, that is actually lovely. I think we can only go this way.
now I'd be way too scared to do this. I'm actually not afraid of heights, really. I go indoor rock climbing on occasion, not to brag. But this would be, I think this would be a bridge too far. without spooky dolls. plan? I don't like that. I am fascinated and terrified by the idea of ancient automatons. And that's not a sentence I thought I'd say today. Okay, so I think that's all we can do here as well. So let's sprint back upstairs and uh, I'm trying to remember how to move this door and that door because if I'm recalling correctly we need that to use on that and that opens that. Um, like something I want to take a picture of. And do I remember right? I do. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, that was not an altogether challenging maze. But I welcome that, that's okay. something here. I think there's more to this, uh, whoops. I think there's more to this maze, to be honest with you. Let's see what happens if I spin it again. Go this way. Is there anything at the center? Because that would be this way. There's nothing at the center. his head. first taste of uh, the actual interior of the pyramid, um, and we will continue and hopefully solve at least a couple of those puzzles on the next episode. So uh, be sure to follow along.